Hello and welcome to the ST Racing League here for season 22. It's the first time I have to say that this season. Uh, here for the Tier 3 Australian Grand Prix at the Albert, Albert Park Circuit here at Melbourne, Australia. And we are back with Tier 3 for the first race of the season. We've had Tier 1 and Tier 2. Now it's Tier 3's turn for the first race of the season. And this time we've got uh, our Comment or commentator back in the commentary box alongside me. You've got Silent Pistol is back with me. Uh, back when you commentated alongside me in, in Singapore. Uh, welcome back. This is for the opening race in Australia. You'll be taking more of the main roles of commentary according to Maori to the, for the season if you do commentate most of the races. So, uh, yep, yeah, so come back to introduce yourself again. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Matthew. Um, I'm Silent Pistol is my Discord username. My actual name is Harrison. I'll refer to myself as Harrison. I'm very, very lucky um, here to be commentating on the start of a new season, a, you know, fresh plate, new palettes for all these drivers to paint on. And luckily, and hopefully, we will get to see some great action-packed content here brought to you by STB in Tier 3 Australian Grand Prix Tier 1. This is going to be entertaining, to say the least, just like Tier 1 and Tier 2. Yeah, so I'm looking for a great season. Obviously, I wasn't able to hear to commentate yesterday because I had to uh, go to my sister's house and look after my three-year-old niece. <coughs> so unfortunately, I wasn't able to help Melody with the commentary yesterday, but I'm hoping now... I'm back up to speed with the commentary. It's been a couple of weeks uh, with all this. Hopefully, we can get in. And just quick information on SC Maldi. Got a message from him saying he's been locked in a D4 setup. So, Maldi's race is already over before it starts. Yeah. Um, and also, I did notice when you started the stream, JMO picked up some damage, I believe, off of Chaos. They had a coming together um, around the last oh. term. And. One of them picked up wind damage, is either JMO uh, or Chaos himself. So maybe a little bit of coming together here in the latter stages in qualifying. But so far, Chaos uh, on top with Maldi just creeping in there in P2. Uh, just set his lap time right now. That is one and one tenth and one hundred off of Chaos's time. So Maldi, he'll go for one more run. We are sure of it. He likes to take some risks around multiple tracks. He's going to take another one. Uh, I'm. I'm sure um, I'm probably right to be honest. Maldi yeah. does everything he can to make sure he can succeed in any race. Uh, predicting himself that he'd be world champion. What do you think about that one, Matthew? Yeah, uh, it's, I know Maldi likes to be overconfident when he saw things. He likes to inflate himself Ooh. a bit like that way. As Cargo just Break goes goes faster. Just... Yep. And yeah, what? Time? You're going about, about Maldi, he, he won't be able to do another lap because first of all, he's got an ERS because he's just completed his lap. And second of all, we've only got like a minute to go. So that he won't mm -hmm. get enough time to do another lap. I mean, he's using his overtake. He's not on his hot lap mode, but he's just yeah. run out of ERS now. So I'm not sure what he's trying to do here. He's probably going to be down because of the lack of ERS down that second sector. So obviously it's big straights now. I didn't see the Delta thing pop up. Oh, yeah, because the, 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 second, the, second, the second sector is before the chicane set. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cargo's got yeah. an 18.5. Uh, but they said Maldi said he's been stuck on a default set, Maldi. So... If that's true or not. Sure not. We will uh, have yeah, we'll... to see. And Chaos, uh, by the way, in P2, he's just on his flying lap right now, trying to reclaim his P1 after Krogo stole it from him Ooh. in the latter stages in qualifying. So Mercedes really going to try and put everything he can into this lap. He saved up quite a bit of uh, ERS, and now as he manoeuvres his car oh, around Australia. Oh, he had. But also, you see a McLaren off track. I believe That'll that's be, a yeah. late 200 ping. Um, Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little bit dangerous on track, of course. Also, Craig, the other McLaren going into the grass as well. But uh, this man is in the grass. Chaos, he's still on track. He's still looking to close each and every uh, tenth or, or, or hundredth down to the last wire here to Craig as he manoeuvres around that very. Down. Tricky, yes, Chicane, and he's really trying to put everything he can in the slap just about to end off sector two. Is he going to be purple? Uh, I don't think it is. So, sector three, this is for it all here. Last bit attempt for Chaos at trying to reclaim oh! it. He's going to the wall. Yeah, he just oh. got a bit too much curb and he spins the barriers. Actually, went a bit forward off the track, but he actually got away with it initially with the warnings. 
but yeah, that obviously just caught him completely off guard. So yeah, that's stuff. He was down in anyway. Whether he can gain that time or not, through that first set two, obviously we won't know. But yeah, I'm surprised actually Chaos up here. I'm not sure if it's just a strong track for Chaos. Or he's just, he's, uh, he's improved over the course of the break. But normally Chaos just isn't normally up here with these guys. But like I said, we did the new with difficult. Obviously the faster driver has obviously gone up to tier two. It's kind of hard to say. But yeah, that's the qualifying done then. Yes, indeed. And here was the, the setup for what's going to be on the grid here for the race in Australia. Craig was able to get P1 at the end of the qualifying session. The McLaren is going to be up top for today's Grand Prix with Chaos just lurking behind in the Mercedes. Audi in third, Alpha in fourth, Yomaz in fifth, the Jimmer in sixth, uh, Side FX P7, Techers P8, Gero P9, Sammy P10, Red P11, Momo P12, Elite 200 Ping P13, Rafita P14, Papa P15, uh, Matador P16, Waterfish P17, Moncho P18, per Perlo P19, and Veroski? Is that how you say it? <laughs> He's Roski, back yeah. in the grid. Yeah, um, in Australia. And what an entertaining qualifying session that was near the end. But Matthew, your race predictions? Well, considering it's raining, not melding. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think, I think yeah. if, I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I think Jamo quite likes wet conditions. So unless the, my brain is playing with me, but I don't know. I have a suspicion that oh, Jamo might say that at some point. So yeah. we'll see, that might be interesting see to see if, that, if it's the case. Uh, from Red's disconnected, so I need to get him back in. Indeed. Um, also, speaking of Jamo, I have uh, commented him, uh, commented on him many times before. I know his pace. I know what he can do. Uh, around multiple tracks, it's just whether he can do it on this track. You can see puddles forming in that pit lane. So oh, I am assuming they're going to go on the full wet tyres to start this Does, off. Yeah, yeah it's very, very seconds. wet. Yeah, uh, up until the formation lap. So full wet tyres. Is the weather going to change or is it just going to stay wet? Do you have any any, I, uh, any information on that? Don't have a clue. Very difficult <laughs> yeah. to say, especially with the driver, especially with the weather forecast, it's very, it's very screwed up on this game. So, we don't know, we will know, obviously, mm -hmm. later into the race. Yeah. Um, and, well, the start of the Grand Prix is going to occur very, very soon. The drama is going to kick off here live once on Twitch STV recently. Craig, I still reign supreme in that qualifying session granted very close between him and chaos do you think there's going to be a chaotic start to the australian grand prix i mean i mean i'm sure there's going to be because that makes anything interesting to be honest uh, no matter what happens yeah. and yeah i mean there's What's gonna be a lot three? of yeah especially tier three multiple and multiple drivers in this historic league. It's just whether one of them will come out on top in their respective tiers. So far it goes and nods the way to great go as he has a little bit of a spin there. Well, the formation like the least spin disqualified. Uh, he has. Um, I'm not sure what uh, Wawalski's doing. I think yeah, he's I mean... <laughs> Miley mentioned about this, people can't back up too much. Um, yeah, I mean, he also mentioned whilst we were in the party that if anybody was doing excessive donuts yeah. or anything like that, Pira, well, instant. I wet. Pira was making a big <laughs> gap as well, so we should be careful with that as well. Indeed. And now, Rego is just about to, to, to round off the formation. You can see a lot of gaps in this formation, not what we want to yep. see. Oh, and Jamo's in the barriers at the exit of Shane. Oh, Jamo. Luckily, not picking up any damage. He did pick up damage in the qualifying session, though. As you recall back to, he just lost the front left of his wing. He, he has to hope that he doesn't do that in this race itself. I mean, he might have flashed back to that qualifying session later on. If he does, then surely it will ruin his race. Here in Tier 3, it's race 1. And it's Australia. It's in the wet. What more could you want here? Lining up the grid. This is going to be special. I can already tell by my abide. These drivers rounding off this grid. Oh my god, so surprised. talented. Has he mind. actually? I think he I think he missed up his grid slot. Oh and there's Samu doing a donut. Burn up there. 
Yes. Yeah, we might just put, so put that in the rules. I'm not supposed to do that purely because it can just it just creates havoc. It just just looks really stupid. I don't do it. I don't yeah. think it's. I don't think it works. To be honest, I think it's kind of pointless. Indeed. Uh, I, I, yeah, that's probably most likely why Maldi said don't do that because it's pointless. Just don't do it. Just want to pull the information up respectively. Um, but yeah. if they're going to be a respectful start, you can you can probably back in here in Australia. We'll have to see. Wet makes everything entertaining, like it already isn't. First here race of season, yeah. First season in the wet. It's gonna be interesting. First race. It's a uh, lights out, I believe. The late start. Lights out on my, yeah. Is it? Oh, I've read lights. Might as well get to drive through, but it's lights out, and away we go for the Australian Grand Prix here in STB. Uh, Craig goes so far, getting a good start, a good jump there on Chaos. As Alpha is able to get the overtake on Chaos himself into the first turn. No drama, looking like it's going to occur so far. You can see a gap just forming between uh, Chaos. He's spinning down the order. He's oh, falling down Williams the order. Oh, he's a the barrage McLaren as well. That was Sammy in the lead. Down the end side, there goes Checkers on Chaos there. Um, Intersecting one switch, I believe, being pulled off the by Chaos and all. Checkers losing his back end uh, instantly off, trying to put power uh, into that car off the exit, trying to put fourth bottle. Meldy going wider on another turn. You can see Elite getting an overtake uh, there on Papa as he goes wide on that same turn that Meldy did. Round the outside, Yomas is looking to go here on Memo. Uh, Memo is still staying and sticking ahead. Jamer getting very close into Alpha, trying to get them a maneuver around the Alpha Romeo. On the right hand side, we're getting very close to that chicane. Is there going to be any drama between those two? Maybe down the inside from the Alpha Romeo? No. It's going. Nash is just stick behind the Alpine of Jamo. Just that little bit more. You can see the STV Maldi now really getting in between uh, the lines here of Alpha. Maybe down the inside. Oh, he's he's going down the inside. He has. And then the Ferrari. Maybe he'll get the best of Victor Alpha. Just to the sticking side by side. Alpha with the best exit. These two busting out early on here in Australia. Into the next turn. I feel like uh, it's kind of settled down for the moment. I mean, Gira's getting quite close to his teammate Moncho. Maybe down the inside he'll go. Uh, that's what he will do. Down the inside. There's still a side by side going into the next turn though. But Gira does come out on top. Between the two Aston Martins. And now Maldi's getting very close here. Over to Alpha. Maybe down the inside go. Has to stick behind into the first turn. You can see a gap forming between Alpha and Jamo. Uh, Maldi will make sure to try and close that gap as fast as soon as he can. Maybe down uh, into the next he can maybe gain some time. Memo's trying to go for a move on side effect. No, he can't. Uh, that'll be too dangerous. Samu and Matador already in the pit lane. What have you made on this start so far, Matthew? Yeah. And also, all those Alpha's he's getting pushed by Maldi. Maldi is very comfortable on the brakes compared to Alpha Z. Uh, Maldi I know is very lot better on the brakes, but Alpha Z seems to be better on the power. So we'll see how that works. All lifting through there, through that fast rounder. So it's interesting to see how they navigate through these corners. Obviously, come to the chicane, Maldi seems to have decent straight line speed. Obviously, Cargo is leading this race just ahead of Jamo. Yeah, indeed. And... I think Maldi might have a better exit here against Alpha. If we go into the next one, uh, he's within a tenth, and you can see Jamo's within a tenth as well. Maybe he'll go for a move. Maybe down the inside, he won't. Maldi, though, uh, he's going to do differently. Down the inside, he goes and touches the Alpha Romeo of Alpha. Uh, trying to go into the next, but he still is stood stuck behind this Alpha Romeo. What else could he do to try and get round him? We'll have to see what he can conjure up in these upcoming laps. This has brought chaos into the equation now to try and battle that out with Maldi as well. So, so far, not good for Maldi, not what he wants, he wants to be, uh, he must be confident on this, this, uh, this car, and you can see, uh, that being traded between each and every respective drivers up into the top four. Maldi, though, really needs to try to get uh, as fast as he can, and try to gain on Alpha, you can see Alpha with a little bit of a wheel spin, going on the exit of that turn, Maldi looking to close up the gap, he can't, he's got multiple times, by the way, closing up that gap, he's just not been able to go for a move. Yep, uh, I've, I've just pulled the stream up and I've just got a message from, uh, it's been put up by, uh, by Callum, uh, Cargo will be, uh, an e Callum, Cargo will be by Callum, uh, last season, tier three, second place, second place driver now in tier two, he says Cargo will get an easy win. Hmm, maybe, just maybe, Craigo, he's got a lot, um, of speed on. I'm assuming he said Craigo, is that, isn't that what he said, Craigo? Try to get an easy win, apparently, according to Callum. Oh, wait, here's Maldi, though, touching the back of the Alfa Romeo. He 
he's still trying to maneuver around. There's a safety car on the track. Was that a VSC? I think that's just a VSC. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, yeah, I think there is a full safety car. It is a full safety car, is it not? Yeah, yeah, it is. I think it's it behind, is. behind Matador. It is as well. So a full on safety car here. I'm third lap of the Australian Grand Prix. But what do you make of this battle between Maldi and Alpha so far? Why hasn't Maldi gotten past Alpha just yet, do you think, Matthew? And also, the message, um, got a comment from Rambo on Twitch saying, Twitch. Your, your voice, obviously, because you're, you're the one that's... Because I'm the one streaming, I'm the one streaming, and you're the one talking next to my stream it always creates that you know that it makes your voice all fixated and yeah. All the, yeah it's doing that that's why so i mean it's a common issue with when you stream on xbox yeah uh, start with something we're gonna do uh guerrero has left the session might be disconnected you know what? maybe i mean it's been a lot disconnected with, uh i think it was Waterfish, he's also been disqualified from the session, by the way. Yeah, so we've got Jackfish um, and FM Red, FM Red both disqualified before the race even started. Yeah, I mean, just really not good from Sammy Red and Waterfish. Um, but from Maldi's point of view, it's not been a good start for him. Uh, he, I think he dropped one place down the order. Uh, Alpha really uh, sticking ahead, Ooh. maybe calling a Fernando Alonso. Oh, fast in time penalty for Yomas with a severe collision. Do you remember what? Has he done that? I mean, he had to overtake uh, Pirlo at first to try and go for that anyways. So I'm not too sure what he was doing there. Pirlo Pirlo's for the five seconds time penalty as well. Your flag, ignoring your flags, that is. And I wasn't going all because of that. I was going all because Wawrowski's just gone on to serve intermediates. And it is lighter. The rain is definitely lighter. But it's not ready for Inters yet. I remember in, uh, I think it was in Austria last season, where... In, I think it was in the sprint race, it was wet and uh, it was wet conditions. We all decided to go for a few of us decided to go for wet, wet intermediate tyres for the first, last like three laps and it lasted like five laps. The first like three laps it wasn't ready and by the time it, it was too late, by the time it got dry enough, it was just too late to catch all the positions back up. So it's going to be curious to whether that's going to be the case for Wojowski, whether he's going to be a bit compromised for the first few laps while it's still yeah. slowly, drying slowly drying out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if there's any, and you can see Maldi and Jamo can be into the pit lane as well. Is Maldi yeah. going on to the Inters? I'm he assuming they are, because there will be. Yeah, yeah, maybe you'll win from it, because when the safety car no, started. Just intermediate tyres? Uh, yeah, because when the safety car started, he did bump into the back of Alpha, of the Alpha Romeo of Alpha yeah. himself. We do have. But it is just on, Inters. I mean, the damage rate damage is, damage is on reduced, which it was last Fair season. Enough. Last season. And oh, Maldi coming out of the pit lane. He's yeah. coming out in P12. Uh, so the question is, is the Inters going to come out on top on the wet set compound? Or is it going to be the opposite? Is the wet set compound just the superior tyre compound for now? Papa and Rafita are going to follow suit to Maldi and James' decision of going into the pit lane, of get getting those intermediate tyres on. So there's a lot of strategy being involved early on in this Grand Prix. Uh, I'm sure many more to go in these laps. There'll be some more entertaining, uh, strategic calls, kind of, you know, where they're going to go for an overcut, undercut. Is it just going to be in a safety call that we've seen right now? Um, but what do you think that it's time to go on to the interest? I know you said before uh, that you felt like it wasn't. But right now, do you feel like when it's a safety call, there's like two laps left to go on the safety, safety car, is it the right decision to go on the interest? I mean,. First of all, you got to depend, is it actually dry enough yet to go into media? Second of all, you got to think, is it going to be dry enough when it gets to actually going to dry enough when it gets there? Obviously, it might not be still wet, still wet conditions now, but is it going to dry enough when the finish, safety car finishes? But also needs to think about is, uh, is there going to be another safety car later on, which might affect you? So if the intermediates haven't kicked in yet, the wet tyre is still the better tyre, they've pulled out a gap, and then another safety car comes out, they're able to pit, put a fresh seven intermediates on, maybe still ahead, you know, it, it, you can then lose positions, so it depends. It's, 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 it's one of those things, really. If it does, it's another, it's, if it isn't another safety car for another 15 laps, then the intermediates might be the better tyre, because you still get that free pit stop. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I do feel like, because there's very minimal people going on those inters, I mean, you see in the pillar, and I don't know what's going on between those two pillar and side effects. Um, just 
you know, kind of overtaking each other. Monster is coming into the pit lane to put on the yeah. as well. So it feels like the most favourable. I mean, I'll put up the detail of the tyres right now. It seems like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Basically eight, off the grid. nine. Yeah, half the grid are just putting on the inters. So it's half and half, really, against wet and inters. Um, the top spots being inherited by Crago, Alpha, and Chaos. They are all on the wet set compound. The question is, uh, is it wet enough for the wet set compound, or is it? just in favour of those intermediate tyres. We'll have to find out very soon here as we'll get a restart sorry, on the safety car in these upcoming laps. Yeah, we're very interested to see whether you will obviously notice if that gap between Jammer and Elite build increases after the safety car. Obviously, you know the intermediates haven't quite kicked in yet. But if Jammer is able to stay within these wet tyres, you know the intermediates will come into play later on because these wet runners will have to pay at some point. So, um, we're just waiting on, I think that's the all oh, safety car coming in already yeah. then. So, Craig is going to dictate the pace oh, of everybody else. There you go, Chaos! Did, 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 did talk about Chaos disconnecting, he just had to disconnect Chaos. He didn't, didn't lag, mm. but he just, he just always never seems to like to stay in for, for a long period of time. Yeah, uh, uh, it's going to be very annoying when you're trying to, to put your hardest, your, your best of abilities on track and that just comes in the way but we're gonna get restarted very soon here Craigo dictating the pace of everybody else remember you cannot uh, overtake anybody until you cross the line or well, the finish line of course so Craigo gonna come on the last time the question is when is he gonna go full throttle and if he goes full throttle is he gonna spin Craigo around the last turn here and uh, he's got oh he's gone full throttle right now that's very late on the way yeah. he put it on and Alpha might be able to sneak up on him there, uh, onto the straight, maybe down the inside. No, he's not going to go for it. Ted is closing off on that ghost in chaos. Uh, oh, right Ted has gone straight on at chaos. turn one. Does he actually, oh my word, he's gone straight into the grass that opens. Something going to take it the third, though. I think I'm just not quite into it right now. Yeah, so in, things uh, are just struggling like more. Same. Yeah, struggles for next set compound. Maybe just not the same with the with the intermediate set compound. As you can see, uh, of course, predicted that Chaos was going to fall down the order. He's now in fifth. When is he going to rejoin? Uh, not only the lobby, but where is he going to rejoin on track? Oh, uh, no. So now you can see some Romeo. effects right there. Alfa Romeo, what's happened to the Alfa Romeo right there? Uh, he got yeah. talked by, he got cut off by the Ferrari there, I think. Into turn six. Looked like it, I can't remember it was. Well, here comes Memo Kels trying to get an take. Yeah, Kels is back in and he's, he's carrying some chaos in the Mercedes camp because he's almost got the overtake on that straight uh, on Memo there. But you can see Alpha right there, so I'm getting very close over to Craigo. He'll look for a move very soon uh, past the McLaren. If he's able to do that, then it will put him in the superior spot of P1. But Memo still trying to fight. Perla here now is in the next turn. Is he able to get the overtake down the inside? Oh, the two. It's more than a connection. It's a full on spin. Memo going down and down the order. Yeah, Memo reset to the track as well. That's a five second time penalty, unfortunately. Not allowed to do that. Uh, as a rule has been in place for a couple of seasons now. Can't restart you can't set the car to track because, first of all, it can really pass drivers that's trying to race around because suddenly you get to back into the racing line. And second of all, it's just, it's, oh well, it's unnatural. So. Uh, um, you can see Memo in the pits, maybe some damage after that. Uh, There's a lot of kerfuffle going on here with Elite and Techers. And it oh, is, and, and I think Elite is going to Oh, yeah, he's, he's really not performing he's well not with these his uh, wet I think tires. I think Intermediates are now the better tire now. I think Intermediates are just starting to overheat. Definitely, definitely, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of evidence for why. I mean, you can see seven lap tires wet compared to three lap intermediates intermediates coming out on top and uh jamie looking to close a gap now to gear up top you can see wet versus intermediates this is the perfect example of what's better uh jamie backing off there. from now yeah Gemma very interesting him. He is. Is is round. Tekis was not enjoying those conditions and he's got the inside melody on jamo and now he's all over the back. Oh, it's been a crash as well! Oh, Pirano, what Pirano, was that? Pirano Elite. They made contact. The team oh, went for a tire runners. Oh, my. 
I think it's a safety car. That's might... a safety car. It just came out. That is a safety car. Oh my god! Uh, it, might be, it might be for Tekkers. Tekkers seems to have a Oh yeah. So whether the, yeah, his spin, mm -hmm. whether his spin and uh, combines with their contact is why we just caused it enough. And this is a this is a blessing disguise for the wet runners. Yeah, really and truly is. And Craig uh, uh, up top in terms of wet runners. He's coming into the pit lane now for the intermediate. So obviously, is Alpha. Obviously, wet runners still lost all the positions anyway, but it's better than what's before. Yeah. So Maud is now leading the race at Jamo. Well, that pit stop of Inter will come really brilliantly from Aldi. Really, he's now leading the pack with Jemo, just his sidekick behind. Uh, they're going to be looking for uh, some scraps between the two. Who doesn't love some good old fashioned cross the metal battling, uh, especially between uh, Maldi and Jemo, two very respected drivers here in SCB. They could be going at it for a couple of laps or more even. Um, as you can see, the last few people coming into the pit lane now. I mean, Tekkers uh, coming into the pit lane. Was he coming down to the pit lane? I think he's just he's he's on he's still on the wet set compounds. Yeah. Why Maybe is he? He's either forgot to select, select it or the game's just being the game. Yeah, I mean that's uh, very unfortunate for Tekkers either way because he's got a pit at the end of this one. So yeah. no matter oh, what happens. I don't think it's in the end of the world because he's still catching up the safety car pit again. He catches up the safety car again. Yeah, indeed. And Maldi, though, what do you take from his race so far? He was behind Alpha for quite a long time, wasn't able to get an overtake on him, but now that he pitted on those inters at the perfect time, it seems, he's now come out on top. What would you uh, take on? What would you express about Maldi's race so far, Matthew? I mean, because he's on the default set, from what I know, from the information being told by him, he's doing brilliantly well. Uh, obviously, Got he obviously got the set of the strategy right, pitting him with the first safety car. Um, obviously, the second safety car brought Prague back into this, on obviously in fresh inters on third place, but managed to do a good drive. I think considering what the setup and the default setup and the way he's driven so far, and took advantage of Jamo being held up. I think it was behind. I think it was one of the Aston Martins. Uh, Jamo had to lift off because uh, the Aston Martin was on the wet tyres. Maldi made the move into the fast chicane. Well, the, the Jamo had was compromised, having to lift off. We got the move done. Uh, so Mali obviously making his brave moves as well. So Mali, so far, good race, but I don't want to try and commentate to curse him too much. Yeah, I mean we posted well, they posted on TikTok STV. By the way, you can all follow that. Just search for STV on TikTok. You can follow us, and then I'm pretty sure you can join from Discord in the bio. So very useful if you if you want to go ahead on the STV TikTok account, you can join and become a driver. But uh, Maldi did post on the STV account about commentators curse about uh, yeah, that was a me. driver. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, having a great race. Papa and, uh, Devil's doing? What was Papa Devil's doing? What are you doing? Well, can you, you just cut the turn three? Oh yeah, I can see that on the uh, stream. You just cut turn three completely. Just fair three seconds. I'm not too sure what <laughs> earth that was. Um, a numpty to be honest. And he's now lost the place. Now the swapping places with chaos. Yeah, this is uh, a chaotic safety car to say the least. Let's see what I did there. Oh, Anyways. Yeah, puns. Oh, that's, 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 that's ridiculously punny, that is. <laughs> no, it's ridiculously punny. Tekkers is still on wet tyres. Is he? Yeah. I don't know what Tekkers is doing. He's, uh, I mean, he's not done particularly well in terms of just race ability and for the conditions. But also for his strategy, he's messed that up as well. So. Yeah. But whether it's the game's fault, we don't know. Oh, I'm going yeah. to four positions. What in the. Uh, I mean, right, right. Gary, what is he doing? Falling back on the grid. This is not what we expect in SCB. This is very unprofessional doing a lot. Um, well, Gary's back up. I mean, we saw, we saw him glitching and qualifying, uh, didn't we? Yeah, um, he was practically sinking down the ground like Mario and then getting lifted back up in the end, drops back down again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was quite funny to watch, <laughs> to be honest, but... <laughs> Right, let's see if Tekka's pits. Alright, Tekka's... Yeah, yeah he has to come to pit lane. I'm staying with him to see what happens. Yeah, if, if he goes on to... Yeah, that's just game over for him. Yeah. 
Oh, there goes this. And it's Inters. And Inters. Uh, Inters. for the front wing change as well. Ooh, that's interesting. So he's going to hold him up for at least 30 seconds more. Um, hopefully he'll be coming right... More. Sorry, no, I was stupid. It should be lasting in 30 seconds in the <laughs> in all about. I'm so stupid, sorry. That was, that was, that was pretty dumb of me. Uh, I should have said, again. like, four seconds more. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you were taking inspiration off Arrow of there, rather than 90 second pit stop. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, yeah, he's trying to make no mistake. Uh, yeah, indeed it's... It'll catch up. So, <laughs> it, 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 problem solved. And Giro is lost position to the Papa Devils again. Better solve the problem uh, later. Well, better solve the problem later than never, as far as I was to say. Um, and Tekka is now joining the rest of the pack, as I'm sure uh, Gamer will be hungry for the overtake on Maori to try and uh, get himself back up into P1. Uh, I believe he's been in P1 before. I'm not sure if he actually is or not. Um, Who was that for? I don't think so. Jamo, I think he's been P2 for quite some time. Yeah, I don't probably. think he's been leading. I think he was like P3, P4 before the first save to go. <laughs> so, uh, can Jamo... Right. Yeah. Can Jamo just try and inherit P1 for the first time? in this Australian Grand Prix, of course not the first time forever uh, for history for Jamie of course, he's inherited many a time, can he do it once more here in the wet uh, skies here from the land down under, but here's Maldi trying to manipulate the pace of every other driver, of course you cannot overtake until you've oh, got that line. He's gone early. But he has gone. He has gone very early, hasn't he? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to benefit him or not. But now they're going to climb well, across like that he has line. He's got eight tenths to Gemma. I think caught Gemma by a guard there. He was not expecting to go before turn. I think it was what well, was turn 15. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a masterclass. I've got to admit from Maudie right there, as we see Papa falling down the order. That straight line to speed just didn't really work out for him. He's now went to the first time. He's got a lift off. You can see side effects in looking for a move here on Yilmaz. It's on that straight. Got a lot of speed. Can Yilmaz still stick the nose in? I think he could. Just a little bit of a squeeze there from the Ferrari. Going defensive. Uh, well, still being ahead though. Not the greatest of decisions in my opinion. And I'm not a driver. Um, but getting very close here to the Alpha Tauri. Can he go yeah. for a move quite soon here? Just a little bit of spin uh, on the exit of that turn. Taking too much curb. Going into the next one now. Is he going to be able to close this gap up onto the straight? We'll have to see. As uh, the Ferrari man, you're getting very close. It's the black and white now getting uh, within a tenth or so. Now going to look for a move. Surely, maybe he'll, have, maybe he'll just stay behind and get running into the chain. I think that's what he's going to do because it's um, definitely much more safe if you do that. And that's what he has chosen to do. So he sticks behind, but closely behind. As we can see him just maneuver around the next turn. You can see Tekkers getting an overtake here on Papa. Um, but. I think so far it's been a successful race for Maldi and he's looking to continue that as he's got the 7 tenths uh, up on Jamo himself. Yeah, he has actually lost are... 3 or 4 tenths over the last few couple of sectors. The gap was 1.1 yeah. 1 at one stage and side effects is right up the back of the basket here. He is and he's looking for a move on this Alpha Dari, going very fast, on. using one of his ERS. Uh, going to the right hand side, looking to go down the inside into the first turn here. Is there any connection between the two? There is not. Back down the inside, the Alpha Tauri will go into the second turn, but now the throw is ahead. It's too late. Uh, and the Alpha Tauri looking and just searching for a move here. As you can see, Ilmaz though, sniffing uh, up the gearbox there of the Alpha Tauri himself. So this three way battle, it seems, for P5 could come uh, to some great battling here as we're going to go shortly onto the street. You can see some overtakes occurring at the back of the pack. Uh, you can see that gap though between Jamer and Maldi just expanding that side a bit more it seems yeah. like. Yeah, it seems like Maldi has the edge in one sector whilst Jamer has the uh, edge in two sectors. But the question is, uh, Matthew, is uh, Jamer going to close that gap? Well, I don't know, we'll have to see. Oh, it's been like gap down. I pretend that Marley had a Dr. had a Porsche King look into that Delta. Uh, I was just looking at Tekkers, and he really seems to struggle with the rear end through that flat out section in second to sector two. He really seems to struggle to keep the stability through there. Uh, oh, I've got to have to say something here. Uh, Chaos and Vulture and Slabo Star went right into the next turn uh, off the back end of that long, long straight uh, off the chicane. And. 
Just... Oh! Side by side! Oh! Hit by chaos. And then, he's, and then Giro gets hit by himself by Elite. Bit of and now Giro might just be a sitting duck at this rate with massive contact between the two. Memo getting a three second here. And maybe he'll go side by side uh, with Elite Ping. No, it's not going to happen. Just staying close behind. But um, I actually went on, on board with chaos for me it looked like he was just spinning on the curb but from your point of view did that look like he was hitting the back I was on board was with Guro and Guro definitely hit the back of chaos yeah so Guro's definitely not having a good Grand Prix good weekend actually so far he's really got to try and improve on this as you can see Jamo he had five oh, heads he he on wide, sorry turn five oh they make contact going through there obviously the corner trap stopped straight there and the move done, Memo. Malik had had a bit of a mess up with two turn five. Uh, and had to, had to uh, proceed the position to Memo. Yeah, and really, and honestly, and truly. Um, there's been a little bit of a kerfuffle in the midfield, where that's where the most penalties are actually in that midfield. Uh, but you can see it up top, though, J Mo, the four tenths in two turns, it's now just six tenths. Just yeah. one step forward. Two steps back, really, for Jamo. He's really got to try and put three steps forward if he wants to really battle it out with Maldi here for these upcoming laps in the Aust uh, Australian. I almost said Austria. Uh, Australian Grand Prix. Um, Jamo taking the fastest lap uh, right there, so he's definitely got the speed, but it just doesn't quite seem like he's getting that gap closed down yeah. to Maldi. Really I'm, interesting. I'm not sure if Maldi has his default set, but Maldi seems to struggle a lot. Through that fast chicane, Jamo always seems to have a lot of confidence for you. I'm going to say with on board to Jamo here, uh, see what his pace is like compared to Melody through that chicane, whether Melody's actually just a little bit slower through there, I don't know. But Jamo always seems to gain a bit of time for the sector. So we'll see what happens going through here. Obviously, very fast section of the track, this is. A bit yeah. of grass, don't want to see that too much, Jamo. Yeah, Jamo just, he, he wants to get very close to that grass. Uh, sometimes he dips it into there, and that's why. Nine tenths is now the curb, but where's that going to come down to? Well, it's now a second, so to answer your question, uh, what? Well, no, it's the exit of that chicane, isn't it? Yeah, but he's really getting in that yeah. time. Yeah, because he, he takes a lot of curb on that second turn. I think that's really what is uh, giving him the edge on the exit. And well, I think that's the only part where he actually gains time. I think throughout the rest of the track, it's just. He loses time again and again and again. He's got to make sure they try to switch that around uh, to try and close that gap down to Melty. Yep, uh, obviously, as well, Jamo doesn't have to worry about DRS. Unless he likes to use DRS. Oh, assist. hold on. There is an absolutely mahoosive drain between six and I think all the way down Rouse to like. He's struggling a lot. He, he just seems yeah. to be like that. He's really squeezing. Oh, he's doing look at him, Yeah, he's doing oh, what I did to Ali Ferrari. Honest contact. Connection between the two. And I am going to the straight. He's to go side by side. They had a look at contact for turn one. And now, look at, uh, I think that's Moncho there. You've got the oh, biggest squeeze. He's squeezed. Squeeze that's Martin. Do you have the inside? Oh, Moncho. Two. So much contact between the two. Uh, Moncho with a massive squeeze. And really, that was more than a squeeze. Just contact uh, through in, throughout chaos. Yeah. Um, really getting every single end of each car stick to him really has um, really hasn't been liked with maybe by the two Aston Martins before both ganging up on him and maybe just maybe Memo on this straight was able to get an overtake here uh, but you can see McLaren there yeah. of Elite Ping he's going to try and go around the outside he's probably going to get the move done and, done, done, yeah. Yeah. and you can yeah. see Chaos though look how close he is uh, Tegura, he was literally touching the back of it! Oh, oh! his contact! And it's a big battle with the Mercedes engine cars and they all go round. That was oh. curly. That three into one does not go well. Just when he thought there was a big Mercedes engine battle going on, oh, one of each team decides to go round. Well, I there's another slap. good battle going on between Tekkers. Oh, oh, no! And Pirol Pirol round, that might... <laughs> yeah, she called Tekkers and the Pirol's going round. <laughs> I was like to say all about the little thing that I drink for me, Pirolo likes to do a lot of pirouettes. <laughs> That's a good one, I mean, that was actually quite a good one, fair enough. Um, but, I mean, when, when Chaos actually had that spin with, I think it was Gilbert, it was definitely a thousand percent Chaos's fault, um, because I was on board with him on that chicane, and 
I mean, Gera, Gera ran a tiny bit wide um, onto the chicane. But he was able to rejoin the track at a spot and at a time in which, you know, it would have given um, a Chaos, you know, a lot of time to think about how he's going to manoeuvre around this. He just wanted to stick it up the inside when there wasn't any room and it resulted in that kerfuffle. And, uh, well, now it's a gap between those three is quite immense, but there's also an immense gap at the top. Uh, Jamo, that gap to Maldi is just increasing and increasing and increasing. Just maybe Maldi's running away with this. Possibly. We will see. Indeed. And uh, now, uh, Montu has been quite close here to... Uh, I can't say his name. Can you say it for me so I can get it in my mind to actually say it? Who is this? Uh, Montu, sixth place. Alphatari. Uh, oh, Mon uh, hell, uh, Rorowski, yeah. Rorowski, right? Rorowski. Just, just say how you say it. Rorowski. We, we, well, Rorowski. Well, Rorowski has... He's in the pits. Oh, Slicks, sorry. <laughs> slicks. On go the medium tyres. Did you even realise? Yeah. I didn't realise it stopped raining. Uh, watch out for these yeah, yeah. Slicks can be a bit slick in these conditions. Slick can be a little bit slippery, really. Um, I'll say that in the sand, like, on the track there. But yeah, medium tyres <laughs> is the obvious choice. Obviously, if you're a little while to get these tyres up warm up the temperature, obviously the track is still going to be cold. But yeah, medium tyres aren't. The sauce can only do about 7-8 yeah. laps in the die. Uh, hards obviously just are a bit too slow and don't need to. The can easily do 15 laps, so this is the rest tyres to go on. And just let you know your mic is starting to echo a little, little bit. Mm -hmm. And well, you oh, can see the mount. Elite and Alpha, sorry, going side by side there. Elite still on the intermediates. Fighting here. Yeah. Very interesting because the intermediate tyres, I mean, I was going to pick up a, on, on Maldi right now. It's just a question between whether J-Mo and Maldi are going to pit at the same time. We'll have to see. Maldi coming into the pit lane is J-Mo as well? Yes, he is. So both yeah, of those uh, good, yeah. coming into the pit I'm lanes. And, well, you can see, uh, Yomaz and Montre, maybe they'll go into the pit lane as well. I mean, they kind of have to, otherwise they're screwed pretty much yeah. um, on track. So I'm assuming they will. Maybe I mean, they'll go for something. see when they come out by Karago. Yeah, Krago might actually get... Oh, it's a Krago, Krago. They yeah, actually might be quite far behind here. I think they might be the lap, uh, lap too early, I think. Yeah, maybe. Uh, hold on. Straight yeah. hit. Yeah, way too early. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you've got so, that spot on. I though. just think it was a bit too slippery. But then again, he did, he's gone through that cold tyre period now. His tyres have warmed up. Uh, obviously, yeah. Jeremy Maldi just need, need, they need to, to get their tyres up to temperature. Ooh! He's got a three seconds. Um, we're going to one on that turn. So not good for the McLaren. It's not yeah, good for Jamie well. because he has just um, gone wide right for that turn. He's Man. probably got some warnings. It's Tekkers, I believe, slipping down the other Oh, no, it's um, Tishka. I don't know why there's a, um, flags then. But what I do know is that on this straight, Euro's got three seconds. And now he could be closing up that gap uh, within a tenth. It's well within a tenth. They're side by side going into that next turn. Down the inside, the Aston Martin goes. Uh, into the next one here, around the outside, the Aston Martin. Oh, big contact between the two rounds. Chaos That's another seated. big he... contact between the two. Oh, is... Tekkers has gone straight on at turn three. I'm trying to get past oh, Papa. Jesus. That, that is tech. just... Uh... That's been a good race about Chaos as well. Chaos, he started on pole position, didn't he? Or was he, but... was, was he taking pole, didn't he? I'm Chaos not too sure. Oh. Oh, let me just get the I mean, it's just. I mean, he was quite high up. He's second the board, place. He started, he started second. Well, I've got to say here, Borowski trying to go round the outside of the Haskar. No, he's got to try and get from switch back here. Uh, maybe just send it up the inside of the Haskar. Make sure back the out. Out. Yes. Track. Called it. Ah, oh, and it's going to be a big crash. Yeah. Borowski's been involved oh, in that. And Jesus. The hats. Yeah. I, I soon saw that. I, I just thought they have to do this to back out. He had to back out. There's going to be a collision and it's caused a DNF, which means another safety car. I don't necessarily think that was Morowski's fault, though. I feel uh, like. And um, with pits now for softs, you're going to be struggling towards the end because they will not go up long. Hmm. They will not. Do you not. think that was Morowski's fault? I don't think it was. I don't know. I, I, I can't remember who, who was on the inside again. Do you remember who's on the inside? 
I can't uh, remember Varovsky like was on the inside, inside. and Yilmaz was on the left. I do yeah. recall that Yilmaz, I, I remember thinking when that when he was still sitting up there, I was like, Yilmaz has got to give a little bit of space there, the Hask, yeah. otherwise this could end badly. It did end badly. I do feel like um, they, it was respectful <gasps> from Varovsky. He has! Oh my, oh my, that's awful for Maldi. Um And, well... The Ferrari man might just slip away from his throne at top spot. He's got three seconds to his name. Jamo has no seconds to his name. But you can, you can, you can kind of the, the, the ongoing theme of these two so far in this Grand Prix is that Jamo just doesn't quite have the pace to actually close down Maldi. Maldi does have better pace than Jamo, so he might just might um, get that three-second gap. What do you think? It's all up to see, Maldi will need to get that gap opened up early on before the DRS to make his life easier. So if Maldi can get that one second before the first two laps, before the first end of the second lap after the safety car, it'll make his life a lot easier. Sandefax has gone to a set of softs, and that is going to be a very challenging to get those tyres to the end. They On the graph, on the game, it, it won't do any more than eight laps. And after about five, they're already going off by that point. So it's, it, 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 he's got to hope to keep the tyres in good check because those tyres are going to struggle to get to the end. They'll be go off very, very quickly. Indeed. And well, Tekka's went off the track uh, and now he's out of the Grand Prix. And well, I mean, I can't say I'm disheartened by that, to be honest. He hasn't really had a, a good drive at all um, in Tekka's. And well, it's either he just gave up on himself or he just genuinely had another mistake. I'd probably bet on the first option. Um, but nevertheless, Tekkers is out and Maldi has to try and get Jemo out of a three second gap. Um, the question revolving around that in these upcoming last few laps is can he do it? Is the safety car going to be in? Um, I'm assuming around 23rd lap around. Um, and maybe, just maybe, the. The, 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 the amount of laps left is just not enough and Maldi just might walk away with it. Possibly, we'll see, but there's still risk of obviously Jammer getting his own penalty. So that's always another factor oh, yeah. to take into account, but obviously why not. He might not even have a warning for I know. Mm -hmm. but, um, I'm checking on race director right now. So Jamie, I'm gonna few minutes lap times. has he had any warnings? Uh he's had two warnings so far. Yeah, yeah so he's so, war or penalty. Yeah, he had, on his first lap, he had a warning, and on his 19th lap, he's had a warning. So, if he gets one more warning, then he's got three seconds. He has to be very, very, very gentle as he's manoeuvring around Australia, trying to be gentle whilst trying to be fast. It's a objective many have failed to do, but j just might be uh, one of that rare percent at uh, trying to get that objective completed we'll have to see as now we'll get this underway very shortly matador i believe in the pit lane um what is he going to go on it looks like the softs so um what's your take on that because you did say that softs weren't last at the end but because it's a safety car maybe it just buys you a little bit more time for the softs and then once you get going again you can pretty much burn them out for around five laps and maybe just maybe you'll push yourself up there what do you think by matador's strategy call uh, well, it's hard to tell. My whole metal's pitted to that later than the other guys, so his tyres won't be as bad. Obviously, he's going to need a lot of tyres up to catch up here, so they're going to be worn out by the time he gets to the safety car. He's already destroyed about half the tyre wear off them, so by the time he's done this, just caught up, he's destroyed half the tyres, so he's got to be careful on those tyres. Uh, not to destroy them too much, it's very important, those softs are very fragile. And I'm also trying to figure out, with uh, some of these people using broadcast, I've got a feeling people like Pirillo and Guro are using uh, broadcast safety car. Because Sidefax pitted, but he's not actually controlling, well, he's actually Sidefax, actually he's controlling his car, but people like Pirillo. Some of them actually not be, they're not destroying the control. I don't think Goro is controlling his car, I think he's got it in broadcast. I can tell by the throttle and brake management uh, that they're not actually controlling their car. But I was interested to see. I, saw, I thought side effects was, a, was actually in broadcast mode and it pitted for him, which I thought was a bit strange. But no, uh, he's actually controlling his car. 
Yeah, and yeah, I mean, he murdered well, the guy himself for allowing the broadcast feature to be on. Said it was a uh, very bad. Um, well, Pirillo using it is it a good or bad thing, Jim Pirillo? I mean, I, th I don't think it necessarily matters, but um, pulling up tires maybe strategic calls. It might not go the the greatest of way. Um, for the Alpha Romeo, but so far. So good for Jamie. He's currently P1 in the race, and currently, technically, P1 in the championship. So, Mr. Jamie, he's not leading the way on the safety car, but, um, yeah. well, instead, Maldi is. So, I mean, Maldi can right up close to that safety car. Make sure not to hit it, uh, make sure not to hit it, Maldi. Otherwise, that's going to be a, a dreaded time penalty, which you do not want to get so not when you pick up. But, as we shortly await for the restart of the safety car, what do you think is going to happen, Matthew? Uh, well, the reason of the safety car, what drama do you think will occur? Well, talk about the drama, I don't think Maldi would be very happy about these F1X drivers not catching up to the safety car in time. Maldi would have liked to think the safety car to come in last lap to give him an extra lap to try and pull away, but now it's now a three lap safety car, it's obviously giving Maldi one less lap to uh, try and pull away, so maldi has got, what, six laps to find three seconds. So it, it's mm -hmm. Maori's got to do. He's simply Maori now. He's got to push. He's got, he's got a couple of warnings in the pocket to use if he has to use them tactically, to try and gain some time. Obviously, it's a very cheeky thing to do. I mean, you get warnings, a warning in the day. But obviously, Maori needs to push away, pull three seconds. He's got to really find some time. Hopefully, Jammer makes a mistake or something, or gets his own penalty, uh, and that will be obviously make Maori a lot more happy. Obviously, still be careful with that Alpha Z. As all going out. I mean, Alpha Z, he's gone. He's gone. Can't take a curse. To curse. Hits oh absolutely my. immediately. Bye bye. I was not expecting that, but um, it's in the middle of that safety car. It's not gone the best for Maldi. He went early. Was Ron Chambers got three seconds? We want to go. He has to be gentle but fast, and oh. he's got three seconds. But now he's looking for a move potentially. Maybe down the inside. The Alpine cannot go for it just yet. But three seconds. That's a huge turning point. As he was once the leader of the Grand Prix, now a mere second place. And now side by side, monster and side effects here. Going very close. But you can see how close Jamo is here to Maldi. This is so close between the two. Maldi is looking behind his shoulder. Uh, at every turn, the, the Alpine is breathing down his neck. Look at this. Overtake being used. He's really got to use it to the best of his abilities. And the Alpine looking to pull away at the last gasp here in the Australian Grand Prix. Now he's getting very close to Maldi here into the chicane, making sure to not go side by side on that section because that's very bad. And you, we know he gets a better exit than Maldi off of these. And now Jamo, he's looking for an overtake here for P1 at the 24th lap of the 29. Round the outside, he's looking to go just about keeping it between Maldi. He hasn't got the overtake. Craig is now uh, coming to the equation. Maybe down the Don't inside of the go. He's looking to make a move. Stick. Can he stick one in there? Round the outside. No. J. Murray overtakes. But back with Craig. This is not what either one of them wants. They want to close down the gap to Maldi. But this is not the way to do it. And they're practically equal. Going on to the straight there. And I think Jamo just has to concede the position. And Craig is now the new challenger for Maldi for top spot here in the remainder of this Australian Grand Prix. Wait, what now? Side effects will win this. At the moment in time, this is what I'd like to mention that side effects is in the hot seat to win this race. That's if his tyres hold on. No, never mind. Commentator <laughs> curse has worked again. <laughs> what is going on? The commentator curse has oh hit. Oh my god. There's three times in like two laps where the commentator curse has just whacked instantly, just instantly taken effect. Hear him about winning the race with the soft tyres, no penalties, and then goes and spins. Literally, not even seconds later. Oh, I think it's a collision. It was a bit of collision, oh. Elsie Martin. And someone else, I think it was Pirillo, was involved. Oh, oh, here comes Craig, by the way. Look at the speed he's got. Oh, man, he's just backing off, though. Uh, he hasn't got quite as good of straight line speed off of that chicane. Then Jimmy just, but he's still closing that gap down to a massive amount here. Going into the next turn, he's within uh, three tenths. Now outside of those three tenths zone, he's really got to try and do everything he can to push and push and push for this. Grand Prix, the last few laps, the last crucial laps. Now Crago going onto the straight. Ha, can he, at the last bit, can he do what Jimbo couldn't and get the overtake on Maldi? 
DRS enabled. So, Maori's got to really try to do everything he can to make sure he doesn't get overtook him for the DRS enabled here. And now going on to this straight, uh, Maori still ahead by six cents. He needs to be ahead um, at a gap in which could really favour him uh, for the last lap to make sure that Craigo couldn't get ahead. But uh, we were talking just before the stream, didn't we, Matthew, about um, yeah. uh, J-Mo, Craigo and Maori being maybe the three top drivers in tier three and it's well it's literally proven to be true they're all top three in this grand prix so far but craig is looking to be first out of all of them as he's trying to close the gap here to maldi maldi is just uh not not got the straight line speed that he wants it into the chicane we know that craig will most likely have the better exit of the chicane he's got drs enabled here he's got to try and get the overtake as soon as he can maybe down the inside or outside it doesn't matter where he gets it or when he gets it he has to just get it. But so far, not good for McLaren. He's getting that gap closed down really quickly, though. I think onto this main straight, he'll be able to fly past Maldi. Oh, and now Prego. Yeah, and you can just see he went very wide on that turn. And now with the arrest. Oh, no, 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 no. God, he's out. Oh, no. Crago is out of the Australian Grand Prix. Catastrophic error from Crago. The McLaren spins into the wall and spins and crashes itself out the Grand Prix. A bit of breathing room for Maldi. But terror and horror as Crago went straight into that wall. But now Demo has another chance to get the victory here. But I'm just wondering, can one chip with the Grand Prix at the moment? I don't think he can. No, he definitely can't. Uh, he had to close. He had to be P2. I'm oh, sorry, P3 right now yeah, to even be in contention up. for it. Yeah, definitely not for Moncho. But oh my, oh my, Prego oh, yeah. out of the Australian Grand Prix. But Jamo right back in the fight with Maldi. Maldi, I'm sure he can hold it on for two more laps. <gasps> oh, rattling that turn almost spins. That he's got the DRS <laughs> wide open there. Oh Maldi, can he get the everything down the inside potentially? Oh. No, I thought. He was going to go for it. Um, would have been quite dangerous to be honest. Yeah, that like, was not even close. Really can. <laughs> <laughs> when you can. Yeah, flag. Red Bull, um, that's Matador. Spinning actually the first part of Chicane. But yeah, wasn't that another comment as a curse with, with Cargo? I don't know. It just seemed maybe. It, be. it might have been another yeah. comment as a curse with Cargo. I had another one there. I had one with side effects. And I also had one with Alpha Z as well. I want to tell you, comment as a curse has hit everyone that we spoke about highly so far. And then after that, safe for the thing to our came in. But bloody hell, this is not what I was expecting. Obviously, Krago, he completely lost it on the curb and just went with the curb to sort of a bit slick after the rain. But he just lost it in the rear. I did something very similar uh, last season. Uh, I don't know if I got a podium from that race. I lost the rear in the same place, but I managed to somewhat catch it, half catch it, and span back into the barriers and got a bit damaged. But. It's quite easy to do that, and it's else that's uh, Graffita's off at turn four. Yeah, um, and Jamo here on the exit of this chicane. This is the moment I reckon that Jamo can finally get a sniff on Maldi. Yeah, he had a sniff before. He wasn't able to complete the overtake. He will get the better exit. He's Look got speed. the DRS. Look at how he's got. He's catching up so quick. Oh, no, 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 contact. <laughs> Between the two, contact between the two. Maldi went off wide a tiny bit. Maybe Jamo backed off out of respect for Maldi, but that was big connection between the two. That could have been fatal for not only Maldi's race, but also Jamo's race as well. Jamo needs to calm his nerves on this final lap of the Australian Grand Prix to try and clutch up the P1 here as Jamo wants to respect. He's got DRS wide open. But he's just not closing that gap down to where he wants it to be. Got DRS on this next straight. Looking for a move here. Oh, Maldi. This is right down to the wire. Maybe down the inside into the next turn. No. Maldi going to keep the head. I mean, it was way off there, Jamo. I don't know why he said it, to be honest. But Jamo here. Oh, my word. He's got four tenths to close down and more to try and get this Grand Prix victory for the first round ever. It's been an entertaining one, to say the least. Um, here, and, wait a minute, is Moncho Grand Prix winner right now? He I'm is! He is, he's too busy to get up to 2.8. Oh, why am I? 
So this is not only a battle between Jamer and Maldi, this could be Boncho's win here. He's got to keep this gap. Lo and behold, this, this battle between Jamer and Maldi is 2.7 right to now. Nothing. This is 2.7. This is, this is all it is. Um, Lisa, the gap, 2.8, 2.7. It's hovering around that zone. Boncho is going to steal the win here. In Australia, we'll be least expected it. 2.8. Maldi will come across the line. P1 on track. on a silver platter. Oh, Holy my word. Everything has gone Maldi's way this race. Maldi wins and Jamo in second. Moncho ended up being P6 after all of that. <laughs> the gap was oh. 2.7. I saw it go to 2.8, 2.9. I was like, wait, what? And I saw 3.5 and I was like, is he spam? Oh, oh my God. Cartel God. picks up P3. Maldi, oh. everything just fell right into place for him right at the end of that Grand Prix. In fact, it looked like it fell right into place for Moncho at the end of the Grand Prix. He would have won the race if he just didn't mess up that last turn. But unfortunately for him, the nerves got to him and Maldi was able to persevere just about by the skin of his teeth. But Maldi, out of all the drama, wins the Australian Grand Prix. He's the First winner of season 22 in 10 3. The Ferrari man comes on top here in Australia for the land down under. He will not uh, take the, the land down under in terms of the podium. He went to the B3. He'll take the top spot in terms of P1. As you can see, the red suit of Maldi. What's a race, Mafia, isn't it? I mean, that is just unbelievable. But in the midst of it, the winner. Yeah, I, I just I'm just baffled. Uh, uh, it all started with Alpha Z spinning under the safety car. So Alpha Z's on the point for because he had no penalties. He span, cargo crashed. The FedEx side effects span as well. He was on for a good results with no soft tires, no penalties. He was on it. Then suddenly we saw Moncho on the back of 2.8 seconds behind with no penalties. He then bins it. Everything just went Maldi's way. I cannot believe, I mean, I couldn't believe my eyes, I'm sure every single one of you couldn't believe your eyes. As here was the final grid for what happened in the Australian Grand Prix. Maldi was able to persevere on top. Everything fell into the place for the Ferrari man. Started P3, ends in P1. Jamo P2 in the Alpine. Yomas P3 in the Haas. Elite P4, Memo P5, Buncho P6, Pillow uh, P7, uh, Chaos P8, Rafita P9, Hero P10, Side Effects P11, Matador P12, Alpha P13, Papa P14, Crago P15, uh, Tekkers, Alcaraz P16, uh, Verosky P17, Samu P18, Red P19, and Waterfish with a lovely P20. Thank you all for watching. What an entertaining uh, Grand Prix that was. Thank you all for watching here at STB. Hold on, we've got, we've got, we've got, hold on, we've got, we've got to do our oh. interviews yet. Oh, you do, don't we? I've never actually done interviews before. Yeah, in yeah the we, might, we might not have done it in, in, back in Singapore because we didn't have actually everyone to come and actually do the interviews with. But normally we always do the interviews when we can. But obviously we've got Maldi ah, and okay. Jamon here. But, but uh, yep, yeah, so obviously this has been a new thing obviously for you. But obviously... Come into the into the combat or oh, into the interview today. We've got Maldi and Jamo in here. We're going to start with Jamo, and well, Jamo, to include your audio. What a race that was! Had everything just happened that race? I mean, commentator curses, spins, wet, intermediate, dry conditions, strategies everywhere, and yeah, everything happened that race. Just put your run down for your race, but it looked like you had a great battle with Maldi for the majority of that race, and with Crago until he fortunately crashed at the end. <laughs> I don't know how he did that. Yeah, it should be good for the rest of the season with this, like this. Close. China next week. I'm quicker at China. Vamos. Very straightforward. Nothing else else to put. <laughs> so... I'm not, I don't do interviews. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, as long as you're happy and you're not looking forward to China, yeah, it's all good. So, well done in second place.
with the Battle of Marwa. Again, last four races. Last four so, races. Um, that's it. Okay. Uh, Maldi. I mean, I mean, just what race that was. You somehow came out on top. I mean, you dominated the Grand Prix, to be honest. Um, but most of that, until you Absolutely. got three seconds. Um, what? And then Gemma himself got three seconds. So, I mean, throughout that Grand Prix, it was a good display for you to keep that P1. Eventually, there were some challenges for your P1. Um, it, didn't, it didn't seem like Gemma could close the gap down uh, at the beginning of the race to that much to where he could overtake you. Near the end, it did look like that. But then, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Moncho actually in the Aston Martin, if he was not to spin on the last turn, on the last <laughs> lap, he would have actually won the Grand Prix. Yeah, he would have uh, won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could, well, I could not believe um, it. But what's your take on the Grand Prix? Um, well, Moncho didn't win, so a bit shot means on top, so absolutely. <laughs> Um, but uh, no, it was very good. Obviously, Jango needed um, the engineer to tell him to go on intermediate. So I already had that little inkling that it was going to be, you know, sort of conditions anyway. So halfway through the lap, I was thinking, you know, I've selected intermediates and tell him one. I was always going to fight with Jango. So I selected those intermediates and it was a good, good decision. I felt quite good on those on those tyres. I went on to mediums. Uh, for some reason, the game, it, every, the whole setup, I selected my setup. And the game just decided to have everything the same as what I was practicing with, apart from the wings. So I was running like um, <clears throat> I was running uh, twenty nine, thirty nine wings. Uh, <clears throat> oh, um, so it was very difficult. I had to use a lot of the ERS, but you know what? I just tried to really do um, it in the corners. Good, great little battle, with JMO. I'm excited for the season ahead. Um, Moncho seems to be quite quick. Cargo was looking quite good as well, but he. He fucked it. Um, China, I'm just hoping for uh, a top five finish, keep it consistent, and then we'll move on to Abu Dhabi um, after. I'm not really good at China, but yeah, we'll see at um, at Shanghai uh, how, how we do. All right. Thank you yeah. very so much, we got <laughs> Well done on the race win, Maldi. Great start <laughs> for your very dominant season ahead. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We'll have uh, a dominant season. <laughs> Anyway, we'll be, yep, we'll be back next week for round two at the at China for the Shanghai at the Shanghai circuit. That's how it is. Uh, Shanghai International Circuit. circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Chinese Grand Prix, we return to China for this season as it's been added to the game. So we'll be back there next week for Tier One. We return to Maldi in the Com Box. Hopefully, have a better race. But yeah. Please come back for next week. If not, then, well, hopefully watch the other races as well. But yeah, so thank you very much for watching and we will see you next week in China. Thank you very much and goodbye.